This is part 2 of AngularJS tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what's a module in Angular and how to create a module, what's a controller and how to create a controller, how to register a controller with the module, and finally, how to use the module that we have created to bootstrap the Angular application. So what's a module? A module is a container for different parts of your application, that is controllers, services, directives, filters, etc. In this video, we'll also discuss controllers along with the modules. In a later video, we'll discuss services, filters, and directives. So why is a module required? You can think of a module as a main method in other types of applications. For example, a .NET console application has a main method, which is the entry point into the application and it's the responsibility of that main method to wire together different parts of the application. Modules are the Angular application's equivalent of the main method. Modules declaratively specify how the Angular application should be bootstrapped. There are several benefits of the modular approach. It may be difficult to comprehend all those benefits right now, so we will defer the discussion of those benefits to a later video. For now, let's focus on how to create a module. Creating a module in Angular is straightforward. Use the Angular object's module method to create a module. The Angular object itself is provided by the Angular framework. Notice the module method that this Angular object is providing has got two parameters at the moment. The first parameter specifies the name for the module that we are creating, and the second parameter specifies the dependencies for this module. A module can depend on other modules. We will discuss an example of module dependencies in a later video. Right now, the module that we are creating here is not dependent on any external modules. So I am passing an empty array as the value for the second parameter. So this is how we create a module. What's a controller? In Angular, a controller is a JavaScript constructor function. The job of the controller is to build a model for the view to display. Model is nothing but the data. In a real-world application, the controller may call into a web service which retrieves data from the database. So how to create a controller in Angular? Simple. Create a JavaScript constructor function. So notice here, we are creating an anonymous function and we are assigning that to a variable. So this is an example of a controller function. And if you look at this controller, notice we are passing a parameter called dollar $scope. So what is dollar $scope? Dollar $scope is an Angular object that is passed to this controller function by the Angular framework automatically. We attach the model to this scope object, which will then be available in the view. Within the view, we use the data binding expression to retrieve the data from the scope object and display it. So in this example right here, we are attaching a message property to this scope object. And within that message property, we are storing the string AngularJS tutorial. So this message property will be available in the view. Let's look at all of these in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. Now what I'm going to do is, to the scripts file, I'm going to add another script file. Let's call this script.js. So this file is going to contain all our custom JavaScript. Now the first thing that we want to do is create a module. How do we create a module? We use the Angular objects module method to create a module. So I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call this my app equals a and g and look at that we don't have the AngularJS IntelliSense right here. To get AngularJS IntelliSense within Visual Studio there's one step that we need to do. So here we have the Angular script so I'm going to drag and drop that onto the script file. So look at that it has added a reference directive right here and that's going to provide us the IntelliSense. Right now if I press control space look at that it auto completes and then when I press dot on the angular object notice that the IntelliSense pops up and we have our module met method there. So the first parameter for this method is the name of the module that we want to create. Let's name the module my module. 
and the second parameter specifies any dependencies. At the moment, the module that we are creating does not have any dependencies on external module, so I'm going to pass an empty array. So we have just created a module. The next step is to create a controller. What's a controller? A controller is nothing but a JavaScript function. So I'm going to create a variable here and I'm going to call it my controller. And I'm going to create an anonymous function here. And to this anonymous function, I'm going to pass the scope object. And to the scope object, let's attach a property. I'm going to call it message. And I'm going to initialize that to Angular JS tutorial. Okay, so we have just created a controller as well. Now the next step is to register this controller with our module. And how do we do that? We use the controller function. So on the module object, my app, we have controller function. So the first parameter is the name for the controller. So I'm going to call it my controller. And the second parameter is the controller function itself. So what is the name of our controller function? My controller. So I'm going to use that variable. That variable is pointing to a function. So we are passing that function as a parameter right here. So the name of the controller is my controller. And here is the function. So we have just registered the controller with the module. Now, look at the code right here to create the module. We have an anonymous function. We are assigning it to a variable. And then we are passing that variable you know, to this controller function right here to register that with the module. Now, instead of that, what we can do is specify the function inline right here. Doing this will eliminate the need to create a separate variable. So now I can get rid of this piece of code. So now here, we are creating the controller function and registering that with the module. You know, both of those steps are happening in a single line. All right, so let's save those changes. So we have a module, we have a controller, and that controller is registered with that module. Now, we have to associate this module with ng-app directive, and we have to associate this controller with ng-controller directive, and we do that in the view. So let's go back to our HTML page. Now, the first thing that we want to do here is reference the script file. So I'm going to drag and drop that script file into the head section. Now, I'm going to specify the name of our module. So the name of our module is my module. So I'm going to specify this as the value for our ng app directive. So now it's going to bootstrap our Angular application using this module. And within that module, we have already registered our controller function. And the name of our controller is my controller. Now, what I want to do is look at what this controller is doing. It's attaching this message property to the scope object. And within that message property, we have this value, AngularJS tutorial. So we want to display that, you know, maybe within this div element. OK, so what I'm going to do here is ng-controller. And I'm going to specify the name of our controller. So the name of our controller is my controller. OK, so what is this going to do? This is going to invoke that controller. And the controller is attaching this message property with this value. And that's doing it to the scope object. And that scope object is provided by the framework within the view. So within this binding expression now, I can use the message property. So let's save our changes. And when we reload this, we should see AngularJS tutorial. And look at where we have specified the ng-controller directive. It's on this div right now. So what do you think is going to happen if I include the same binding expression within this div? Now, this ng-controller directive you know, is responsible only for this div. Outside of this div, you know, this message property from the context object is not available. So let's save these changes. And when we reload this, look at this. It doesn't display anything there. 
Okay, and that's because the message property is not available. Now let's see what's going to happen when I move this ng-controller directive to the body section. Let's save our changes. So now the controller will be available within the body section and to any of the children within that body section. So let's save our changes and let's reload this page and look at that. AngularJS tutorial you know, is displayed twice. So here we have that example which we have just um, you know, worked with. So first we are creating a module and we are creating a controller and then we are registering the controller with the module using the controller function. Here we are doing it in three lines. We can do it in two lines like this. So right here we are creating the controller and registering with the module. Both of those things are happening in just one line. So here are the different moving parts of the example that we just worked with. So we have our module, we have our controller here and that controller is registered with the module. And then we associated the module with the app using ng-app attribute. So the module name is specified as the value for that directive. And then the controller is associated using ng-controller directive. And then we are using the data binding expression. So to the context object, I mean to the scope object, we are attaching the message property. The message property has got this value. And using this binding expression, we are reading the value of that message property from the scope object. So when we view that page in the browser, we should see the value we have in the message property of the scope object. Thank you for listening and have a great day.